wedding party. This can be a fun, exciting, but pretty stressful topic for most people, I would think. Um, so really excited to kind of unpack this one, really dig in and, and really help couples understand how they're going to ask and how they're going to choose and, and some common questions that we all receive. Um, so the first one that I'm going to ask you is, you know, related to asking your bridal party itself, right? That's one of the first things that you do, right. which, which is exciting. Um, who do you pick? So it can definitely feel overwhelming. You don't, you want to think about, you know, who are your key friends? Um, you know, those people who have been with you since, you know, childhood or that have been really big supporters of the two of you and your relationship. Um, and then, you know, any family as well who is really important to you. So, you know, those are kind of those two places to look. You don't want to feel obligated to pick someone, right? So you really want to think through the people that matter the most to you and then to you too as a couple and, and make, a, make a pick that's going to be someone that you feel is just as important in your life 10 years from now as, as they are today. I think that's important, right? Is is looking ahead too. Like, is this somebody that you just yes. feel obligated to because you were childhood friends, you haven't kept in touch? Right. Yeah, no, I think that's really good advice. And just because someone asked you to be a part of their bridal party, you don't have to feel that same obligation to kind of do it on the other end either. Sure. Um, really make it count, make it the people that matter the most to you. Um, so that way you don't ever kind of regret that decision later on. Sure. No, it makes sense. Um, another common question that comes up a lot of times is, does, do, do each sides have to be even? They really don't. There's no kind of rules about that anymore. So um, have it be uneven. It can be really fun to kind of change it up. And the only part that you kind of have to think through then is the processional and recessional at the ceremony. Sure. But there's no rule that says that you can't have two people from one side and one person from the other side walking you know, up or down the aisle together. Um, so there's there's easy ways to make that work. So again, don't feel like pressure to pick a seventh person because you know your spouse has picked seven. Um, it doesn't it, it doesn't look weird in photos or unusual or anything like that, like, which is well, probably the most common thing we hear. Right. Um, and then that same thing, don't feel like you have to just pick girls and guys or you know same sex on either side because you really can change it up. You know, if you have a best guy friend, make them a bridesman or you know a really great girlfriend then make her uh you know groomswoman so there's there's ways that you can really personalize it um a big southern tradition is to have the father of the groom be the mm -hmm. best man um so that's something that you could consider if you and dad are super close to each other um but again there's no kind of obligation pick the people that that really matter to you and if there are other important family members that maybe weren't included in the wedding party, there's lots of other cool ways to incorporate them throughout the ceremony or the reception to kind of honor them. Sure, and if you could elaborate a little bit on that, what are some of those ways? Yeah, you could make them ushers, uh, readers, um, guest book attendants, you can always recognize them in a toast. Um, so there's different ways that you can kind of honor those people without feeling that kind of obligation to make them a bridal party member. Gotcha, okay. Um, and then another fun thing to consider is is how do you ask them? So how what are some advice? What's some advice that you give your couples on how to ask your 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 groomsmen or bridesmaids or? So it's crazy. Bridesmen. There's so many fun things you can do now. Um, so it's kind of become this whole other uh, you know asking people. Um, project so yeah. a lot of people will put together little boxes maybe um, have everybody over for you know coffee and or wine or something and then present that and ask them to be your bridal party if they're not local you could mail it to them so fun things like robes or yetis or um, you know different little gifts and cute notes sure. is a great way to kind of ask your bridal party and show them you know how much they mean to you just from the start because obviously it's a it's a big obligation to become somebody's uh, you know maid of honor or even a bridesmaid um, so you want to show them bit. it is it is you know time and financial so you really yeah. want to show them how much they they need to you and that you couldn't do this without them yeah, no, I remember our friend Brian um, in the middle of a bar, got down on one knee and asked him to um, to Carly Rae Jepsen's uh, Call Me Maybe. Of course he did. Yeah. <laughs> um, I said yes. <laughs> um, any uh, any other special ways that you could ask, um, ask somebody to be a part of the wedding party? I mean, I think... You know, also thinking about like any kind of fun inside jokes you have, sure. um, things like that that you can incorporate. So anything you can do to really make it personal is a great way to do it. Um, 
And I would I would plan to ask everybody around the same time. Um, that way, you, sure. know, you know, a lot of people are posting on Instagram or Facebook. You don't want your other friends to feel like maybe you aren't going to ask them. Obviously, right. that can be a great surprise later on, but you certainly right. don't want to hurt feelings. Of course. Okay, perfect. Um, well, thank you for sharing a little bit about that. Um, you're thinking about Brian asking me, again, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> my I can see it. Um, that was funny. <laughs> so <laughs> moving on to the next topic, um, what do they wear? Um, so when you're picking out outfits for your wedding party, I guess how do you how do you even start there? Yeah, so I think once you've picked your dress, um, then you can start looking at bridesmaids' dresses. Um, you certainly want them to, you know, decide on formality of the event, you know, is it a more informal event, so maybe they're wearing something short, is it more formal, so you want them to wear floor length, um, and then start to think about colors. So what colors have you selected for your wedding? Do you want to stick in that color shade? Do you want to do something more neutral? Um, you know, a simple, you know, a black dress, you can never go wrong with that. Um, so start thinking about those things. And then a really popular trend is kind of to mix, mismatch uh, the gown. So they could be mismatched in color or uh, the top a lot of times is what's really popular mm -hmm. that way everybody feels comfortable and feels like they look beautiful um, yeah. because of course these are your most important people you want them to, to feel beautiful on your wedding day as well and then for your, for your guys um, you could do a completely everyone in the same look you know matching suits and tucks or you can change it up maybe the groom wants to wear something that stands out a little bit so maybe it's just like a slight difference in the tux or the suit, um, or maybe they have different color ties, different color, you know, pocket squares or boot sure. So there's ways to kind of make the groom stand out. But a lot of times, you know, the groomsmen will match, but it doesn't have to be. Sometimes it looks really cool to have them in, you know, totally separate colored tux than, than the groom. And so that can look really well too. You want to think about how it's all going to look together in pictures and of course. in the ceremony as well, of course. One thing that I always just thought from a practicality standpoint that's pretty cool is when you pick a color theme and then you let your bridesmaids Kind of go pick what they want. Yeah. Um, I could see that getting out of hand though. It can't. So, so you definitely want to set some rules. Um, what length do you want? Um, what kind of fabric do you want? Is there a particular you know store or shades that you want people to stick in? Um, so definitely kind of setting some some boundaries because it can it it can it can turn out badly in the way that it looks. Um, if you don't give some rules, but also it can feel like very overwhelming to, as a bridesmaid to be like, yeah, just go pick a purple dress, you know, so that right. can feel very overwhelming too. So if you give them some kind of like, these are the three shades of purple I like, um, make sure it's floor length, make sure it's chiffon, you know, give them a little bit of guidelines. It makes it a lot easier for them actually to pick something as opposed to just kind of being like, where do I even begin? Right. Yeah. So you brought up fabric. I'm mean, now I'm just curious. So, <laughs> like, how would that affect the the flow and the pictures and all those things? Yeah, you want the prop. Most likely, you want the fabric to all match. That way, it photographs the same way. Um, it can affect the color and the way that that looks. Um, satin dress versus a chiffon dress are going to photograph very differently and look very different in pictures and both like formality. Um, so you want to kind of be consistent in that. So you want to make sure you have some consistency throughout the gown, so it looks like that are meant to all be in the same bridal party. Right, yeah. okay, that makes sense. Um, what about accessories? This can be fun for you for the guys. Yeah, so for the guys, you can definitely have fun. Uh, like I said, you could do boutonnieres. That's obviously the most traditional version of sure. it. Um, pocket squares are becoming very fun. Yep. You can probably speak to a lot more of yeah. uh, these accessories. I love the pocket but, squares. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can change it up with socks and um, cufflinks. Cuff cufflinks are a favorite of mine. Yeah, so suspenders. Yeah. You can really have fun with it. So, you know, the cufflinks could be um, maybe the groom's favorite. You know, I've seen like Star Wars themed yep. or um, different things like that or maybe um we've had couples who did everyone's favorite uh, football team cufflinks so you can kind of change it up and have fun with that it doesn't have to be all matching um and socks is obviously a super fun place for guys to play with. <laughs> <laughs> and then for your girls you know you can kind of decide do you want them to all look the same um or do you want them to wear their own jewelry shoes is another thing to think about um, do you want open toed or closed toes so if you have preferences make sure you make that known um heels no heels um, things like that, you'll want to make sure you communicate that to your girls and give them enough time to purchase whatever whatever you're hoping that they wear with their dress. Yeah. Now, I will say from a guy's perspective, it's really, it's an exciting time when it comes to being, you know, finding your suit or your tux because there's so many options out there now. It used to be there'd be one store you could go to right. that was in kind of in all the places that your friends were. Everyone's so spread out now. There's been a lot of companies that have popped up. 
um, that are helping with that. It's just making it so much easier. And, um, you know, in the fit, or the fit, in my opinion, is getting even better, which yeah. is really, that's great for everybody. Because used to, it was just, you know, a big boxy right. suit or tux. And now everyone, even a groomsman, can look good. Right, and that fit is so important. And yeah. It makes a big difference. So the guys, if they're renting, you know, they want to make sure they get it enough time that they can make any adjustments that needed. And then for the girls, you want to make sure that they also get their dresses in enough time to get it altered. Because usually those bridesmaids' dresses need some kind of alteration somewhere around. Yeah. Um, and you want to make sure the girls have time to get that done. Because that's a, that's a big difference in how it, how it looks on people. Yeah, and I think, too, you know, for, for guys, the sizing is pretty uniform, whether it's a tux or a suit. It's pretty much similar to what you would wear in normal in, in normal yeah. life. For the girls, it's a little different, isn't it? Like, the sizing can kind yeah. of get a little warm. Yeah, I mean, that's just kind of how it is for girls. <laughs> just in general? <laughs> just in general. Guys have it much easier when it comes to sizing. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah, that's fair. Um, okay, well, perfect. Well, and then kind of moving into the kind of the, the last topic here, what should be, what should the, the, the bridal party expect um, in, in what they should participate in as far as, you know, the clothing or whether it's the day of, the day before, or, or even, you know, um, uh, bachelor, bachelorette parties? Yeah, so I think definitely when you ask your bridal party, I would kind of set expectations at that point. You definitely want to be upfront with them about any kind of costs or time obligations and what you're going to expect um, because you want it, You don't want hurt feelings on either side. You're asking these people because they're so important to you. Yeah. You certainly don't want this to come between you know, friendships. Right. Um, so letting them know, hey, as a bridesmaid, I'm going to want you to be at my bachelorette party and my bridal shower, you know, the rehearsal dinner, and you're going to have to buy a dress or whatever those kind of expectations are. Yeah. And then being really cognizant too. These people are super important to you. So you probably know if they're, you know, what their general financial state is. Right. You want to send people can... into debt. No. For, right. And they're probably in multiple weddings usually, right. at, at, you know, for a few years. Right. And yeah. this can be a big commitment so and not only that you know maybe they have to take a couple days off to travel to your wedding right but they don't have any other vacation time to take days off to go to a bridal shower and a bachelorette party and things like that so definitely have like open open communication on that yeah um, I think kind of those standard things is that you most most bridal party members do come to your bachelorette party um, a bridal shower if they're local that's not always you know possible um, and then your bridal party tends to you know 98% of the time be at the rehearsal and rehearsal dinner um, and then in obviously wedding and then if there's anything after the wedding you know if you're having a brunch or something like that it's obviously great if they can make it um but it's not always possible if they're traveling of course so kind sure. of having those those discussions and then letting them know you know hair and makeup is going to be an additional cost or i'm able to cover this for you um a lot of people will kind of cover that cost as a, as a gift to their bridal party sure. in place of other things so just kind of keeping that stuff in mind okay um, you know, and I think I think you you hit the nail on the head there, right? In in setting expectations because these these are your friends. They, yeah. This is your family, and and that's the that's the importance of of, of a way, right? Um, and then the other kind of thing to consider is including animals. <laughs> um, this is pickles, by the way. Um, how can you include you know your your, your pets and in in, in, in your bridal party? Yeah. <laughs> So I think definitely asking your venue, you know, what their restrictions are, if you're allowed to include them, um, and then they can certainly be cute kind of ring bearers or flower girls. I would just make sure that you have thought through what that means. So, you know, have somebody at the end of the aisle who can collect them so they're not kind of sitting through that whole ceremony. Um, sure. And probably ceremony and maybe a few pictures is about where you're limited. They're probably not going to be guests at your reception. Yeah. There can be other fun ways to incorporate them into a signature cocktail or, you know, a guest book sure. or something like that. No, that's fair. Yeah. I mean, Pickles couldn't sit for a 10 minute podcast. Exactly. So, <laughs> so a four hour reception is probably going to be a little hard. Yeah. Um, okay, perfect. And actually, I did want to go back to Pickles Distracted Me, but I wanted to go back to the other, the other point um, that you were making around, again, setting expectations. Again, I, I really want to echo how important that is because you don't want to lose friendships and relationships um, because someone didn't attend a, you know, a, a, a bridal shower. Yeah. A second bridal shower because there's a lot of these things that happen, and a lot of people are very, very excited. And people will throw, you know, your future mother in law may throw you one, and, and your mom may throw you one, and then your friends. And you really want to take into account 
and be empathetic with everyone's situation um, as far as that, those expectations are concerned. Definitely, and I think it's it's true on both sides. As you know, the bride you, and groom, you want to make sure you set the expectations, but as someone who's being asked to be a part of a bridal party, you want to also set those expectations for, from the beginning. Hey, I am so honored, but I don't have any vacation time, so I'm not going to be able to come to any events, or money's really tight, I may not be able to afford this. You know, set those expectations from the beginning so that way feelings don't get hurt. Um, and then if you don't think you can take on that responsibility um, without hurting the friendship, you know, you can always kind of address like whether or not there's going to be another role for you instead of bridesmaid or groomsmen. Sure. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you again for all the amazing advice. It's pretty clear that you've done this a few times. <laughs> Um, as far as, you know, in closing, we always ask, you know, what are the best next steps? What should couples think about as they're forming their wedding party and, and, and you know, setting those expectations and whatnot? So I think first and foremost, don't ask anyone until you're, until you're ready to ask, fully ask. So have that discussion between the two of you, make that list, um, and then go out and ask people. Um, and then once you've asked, make sure you let them know kind of what those expectations are going to be. And then throughout the planning process, and include them, but make it fun. You know, these are your friends. Um, take them with you to look at bridesmaids' dresses or get their opinion on, you know, shoes or jewelry. Um, but keep in mind that it really, it really should be fun. Yeah, perfect. Well, thank you so much.